Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Greg Jones, naturopathic physician and founder of Innovative Wellness Center here in Phoenix, Arizona. I specialize in longevity and anti-aging. And for the past five years, I've been helping my patients recover from chronic gut issues with advanced protocols, including peptide therapy. So in today's video, we're gonna cover what leaky gut actually is and why it's a real clinical problem. The three most promising oral peptides for gut repair, DBC-157, KPB, and lorazotide, and when they may each be the most clinically effective. So number one, what is leaky gut and why does it matter? Leaky gut is a common term for what's called increased intestinal permeability. Now that's the condition where the lining of your gut becomes compromised and it starts to lose its barrier function. So in a healthy gut, the epithelial lining acts as a tight security. So and the way you want to think about that is your gut almost like a fence, right? And so if that fence has holes in it, things can kind of get in and out of it, right? So, so in a healthy gut, the epithelial lining acts like tight security. Nutrients get absorbed, pathogens, toxins, and undigested foods stay out, and that's what you want. Now, these tight junction proteins, also known as occludin, claudins, and zonulate occludins, they hold those cells together. They seal the gut lining, and it's almost like caulking between tiles. For under stress from poor diet, antibiotics, overuse of anti-inflammatory medications, alcohol, or even chronic inflammation, those tight junctions, they begin to loosen. So what happens next? When the gut becomes leaky, it's going to allow unwanted substances to pass through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream. Some of those unwanted substances are LPS or lipopolysaccharides from gram-negative bacteria. So we all have these gram-negative bacteria in our gut, but they shouldn't get out. And when they do, the immune system sees it as a foreign invader and it's going to attack them. And that can lead to more inflammation. Another thing that can kind of leak from the barrier to the bloodstream are undigested food proteins. Food is supposed to be in the gut, not the bloodstream. And last but not least, environmental toxins and metabolites can also get into the bloodstream. And this is going to trigger that systemic immune response and drive the release of pro-inflammatory proteins called cytokines like IL-6, TNF-alpha, and IL-1 beta. So why does this matter? Because leaky gut doesn't just affect digestion, it plays a central role in many chronic inflammatory and autoimmune conditions, including IBS or irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease, also known as IBD like colitis and Crohn's. Also has an impact on Hashimoto's thyroiditis and also has an effect on psoriasis and eczema. Leaky gut has an impact on brain fog, fatigue, and mood, and also metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. And so at the end of the day, leaky gut is going to impair nutrient absorption, alter your microbiome composition, and increase the risk of food sensitivities. So in essence, your gut is no longer digesting, it's leaking and inflaming your entire system. So let's get into these top three peptides that help the leaky gut. Number one, DPC-157. BPC-157 or body protection compound 157 is a 15 amino acid peptide derived from our gastric juice. It's one of the most widely used peptides for tissue regeneration and healing, especially in the gastrointestinal tract. So how does it work? Number one, it's going to stimulate angiogenesis, and that's forming new blood vessels to deliver oxygen and nutrients to damaged tissues. It's going to enhance hyperblast migration, and that's a key step in wound closure and epithelial repair. It's going to promote tight junction restoration, which is critical in sealing up that leaky gut. It's going to modulate inflammatory signaling, and that's going to reduce cytokine activity at the gut lining. So why does that matter clinically? Number one, it's going to accelerate healing of ulcers, whether they're gastric or intestinal. It's going to improve that gut barrier integrity and IBS, IBD, SIBO, so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and also post-antibiotic dysbiosis. It may reduce intestinal bleeding and permeability in NSAID, or that's your ibuprofens and your aspirins, and they can induce an inflammation in the gut. And so in some other studies, DBC-157 has also been shown to repair fistulas, anastomosis, and other esophageal erosions. So how do we use DBC-157? For gut health, we want to use it as an oral capsule, and that's going to help work locally along gut tissue. You can also get it as an injectable form for orthopedic or systemic use, but oral is really preferred for gut health. So I want you to think about BPC-157 as your go-to peptide when the gut lining is damaged and needs rebuilding. Let's get into our next peptide, KPV. KPV is a 3-amino acid peptide derived from alpha-MSH or alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. And that's a melanocortin hormone involved in inflammation regulation. So how does it work? KPV is going to suppress pro-inflammatory cytokines, those pro-inflammatory or, or inflammation-driving proteins. It's going to inhibit NF-kappa-beta activation. And that NF-kappa-beta is a master regulator of inflammation. So think about NF-kappa-beta opening the floodgate for more inflammation in the body. It's going to help maintain the gut barrier by reducing epithelial stress and permeability. And it's also going to support macrophage reprogramming. And that's going to shift things from a pro-inflammatory to an anti-inflammatory state. So how does this help us clinically? KPV can calm down immune system-driven gut flares that are seen often in Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. It can reduce local inflammation and models of colitis, chemically induced enteritis, and food allergies. It can help patients with histamine intolerance or mast cell activation syndrome, also known as NCS, 
or chronic inflammatory gut syndromes. Speaking of mast cells, it can reduce intestinal mast cell activation, and that's huge for sensitive patients. Now, how do we use KPV? KPV is also available in an oral capsule with a very low side effect profile. It can be taken during active flares or part of a maintenance anti-inflammatory protocol. So KPV doesn't just reveal the gut, it calms the immune system so healing can begin. Now, this is really cool. A lot of protocols and a lot of formulations have BBC and KPV together, and you get the benefits of both peptides. Now, last and certainly not least is lorazotide. Lorazotide is a xylin antagonist, meaning it blocks the signaling that causes tight junctions to open. So how does it work? It's going to inhibit zonulin. And just so you guys know, zonulin is a protein that increases gut permeability by relaxing the tight junctions. I want you to think about zonulin like scissors that are kind of cutting that junction where the gut cells are held together. Lorazotide is going to restore tight junction integrity. And that's going to keep those unwanted antigens from entering the bloodstream. It's going to reduce immune system activation triggered by food antigens and microbiome imbalance. It's going to maintain the mucosal barrier during gluten exposure or diagnosis. Now, how does lorazotide help us clinically? It was studied extensively in patients with celiac disease shown to reduce symptoms during gluten exposure. It may reduce systemic inflammation tied to leaky gut and autoimmune and neuroinflammatory conditions. It's ideal for food reactivity, food sensitivity, pulse antibiotic permeability, and immune dysregulation. It can also help manage gut permeability in patients who aren't complying with strict elimination diets. So it's not a pass to not to ignore your doctor and the diet recommendations, but it can help reduce those responses that you do get when you're not complying. So how do we use lorazotide? It's taken orally in a capsule form, often with meals or before known food triggers. So if you know you're about to eat something you're sensitive to, lorazotide may be helpful for that. It's going to work best in combination with dietary interventions and other gut repair strategies. Now, lorazotide doesn't heal tissue or suppress inflammation. It controls the gate that keeps the gut sealed. Now, although this is not medical advice, let's talk about when I use these peptides clinically. Let's start with BBC-157. That's very good for tissue healing and regeneration. So I'm going to use that in ulcers, IBD, SIBO, just overall gut health, or if I feel there's a little bit of gut inflammation. KPV, as an anti-inflammatory and immune modulator, I'm going to use that when there's autoimmune flares, ulcerative colitis, or if I know there's an overactive histamine response or a mast cell activation going on. Finally, the razotide, that tight junction regulator, I'm going to use it in cases of food sensitivity, gluten intolerance, gluten sensitivity, or overall immune system overactivation. So if this video helped you understand how peptides support gut healing, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps spread the information. And subscribe for more science-based content on peptides, longevity, and functional medicine tools. And if you know of someone dealing with gut issues who's stuck in the supplement miracle round, please share this with them. This might be what helps them finally turn the corner. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.